The flying device here is a, an imitation of a Talatrus saltator, um, more commonly known um, on Irish uh, beaches and estuaries as a sand hopper. I think it might also be called a sand flea, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we just call them sand hoppers over here. And they're uh, very similar to a freshwater shrimp, really. And they um, have these two distinctive uh, front feelers, if you like. Um, and they can be different colors. They could be gray or amber. Um, on the front, the, the fly itself tends to be a sand color in the body and sort of a more mottled um, back to it with, with, with a sort of um, sand with dots or markings. Uh, so um, I'll just put up a picture in a sec there of a couple I collected uh, recently which were released back into their, their habitat when I was finished having a good look at them. And um, you get an idea. And they're about, the ones, the ones I picked up were some of the larger ones which, which were about a size eight to a size 10 um, wet fly hook or grub hook so I'm tying these on a 10 there are plenty smaller ones and um, they're obviously a, an important food source for for um, fish in salt water so they live along the edge of the tide line and they burrow and the tide comes in and washes them. often if the wind is blowing offshore they get blown around as well because they can hop uh, quite a few inches into the air but their sense of direction isn't the best so I don't think they're quite sure where they're going to end up whether it's going to end up in the in the water or in the safer safer end, uh, uh, end of it on the sand and they, they sorry, I'm, I'm not a scientist but uh, as far as I can gather um, they can live on decomposing weed and, and as I say they burrow down um, quite a bit in the sand and then they uh, come out particularly um, when the tide's gone out and they, they migrate down down around the shores and that um, and, and I've often read that they migrate down at night as, uh, as well so um, so I put up a picture and then um, I'll tie one uh, you can do a couple of variations of them you can use um, span flex or flexi floss type feelers you can use uh, this one is grey dyed, a silver mallard dyed grey, um, just a pinch each side. And the distinctive eyes, so this, this one has um, little black eyes. So um, again, you can see different effects on the backs of the flies. And that one's a slightly different um, material on the back. And I've added some, some stripes. If you don't want to use the artificial eyes uh, either plastic or or bead chain ones you can simply use a marker and put black dots on the side of the shell um, at the head area to look like eyes so there are a few um, I did earlier so we'll post a picture and then we get into the tying of the fly a heavyweight grub hook size 10 i think this one is from falling mill and i'm going to use a heavy enough tread uh, hopefully you'll see later um i don't mind because the body of these shrimps if you like or or hoppers are um, it's quite bulky anyway and i can get a good bit of dubbing on it the other thing is when you shine the light on it the tread tends to be um this particular white tread ten tends to show quite quite uv so um, I, I don't think that's any harm when, when dealing with mullet. So I'm just going to catch it in here and start to bring it down the, down the hook. Just trim off this piece here. Now on this one I'm going to add grey span flex for the, for the legs. So um, this one, I think the price tag of it was from uh, Funky, and 
Funky Flexi tends to be a little bit thinner than some of the other brands, which I like on, on this fly. On some of my other wallet platters and that, you'll see I use a slightly heavier um, diameter than this, uh, and that's often if I'm tying a, a pattern that represents a mud shrimp, which is a, a slightly different um, creature. And the, 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 the feelers on the mud shrimps tend to look a bit more like claws um, than, than thin feelers. So uh, I prefer these thinner ones for, for tying, tying sand hopper patterns. So I'm just going to catch one in each side. I just want to try and make sure I'm keeping them on each side of the hook as best I can. I'm going to come well down around the bend. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. So I'll just get these to stretch to trim them off so that there's no no bumpy bits here. So I'm just going to go back up the body and on the way back down I'm going to add in a rib. So you can use, I suppose on this pattern you can use mono or um, wire. I'm going to use some 2 mil wire on this one. I suppose one of the slight advantages maybe with ribbing it with wire is <coughs> Um, I think people starting off find it a little bit easier to, to to use on trim patterns than the mono. Mono can be a bit slippery. And the other thing I find is when you're teasing out your dubbing, you can make out the wire. Um, whereas the clear mono rib can be difficult to make out against the background of the... Um, against the background of, 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 a, of a sort of a clear sand colored uh, dubbing. So the next thing we're going to add in is the shell back, which I'm trying to locate here. Um, I'm just going to use this one. It's a, it's, it's, it's a sticky back one. It's, it's not sticky itself when you really, when you peel it off and it's a nice mottled sort of white with dots um, on it. I did have another slightly different one lying around there that I was, I was about to show you. Yeah, this one as well, which again gives a nice sort of a mottle type effect. So, just peeled it off there. Um, enough that will go over the, the back of our fly. And then I'm just going to catch it in here. Again, just being a little bit careful, just want to keep this on the back of the fly. Just going to back a bit. And again, this little building up here just helps a little bit with the with the shape of the shrimp. So I think I'll add eyes to this one. Um, so I'm going to come forward a turn or two, not much, just just a little bit, and I'm going to add some black um, bead chain. Okay, so this is. Can get this stuff in all different um, colors. Um, this is a nice small diameter one. I'd say it's a maybe two mil, maybe size I. And just gonna figure of eight that onto the hook. I'll get off down a small bit more. Okay, so it's a good idea to add a bit of glue there, so I'm just going to get a drop on a needle and apply it. You can, if you brush on, you can brush it on. Um, so some kind of good glue. And we're going to be moving on to the, to the dubbing for the body, but before I apply that, I'm going to wax my tread. A nice coat of wax. Now what I'm going to use here is SLF Prism 2 which you've seen me use before on a blue shrimp. Um, 
suppose just in case there's any thing with um, YouTuber and I'll just take the price off it. So it's an SLF Prism 2 and I'm going to mix sand and ice pearl. The ice pearl has a kind of touch of UV pearl in it, which I like. And sand obviously is going to be fairly close to the body colour of the naturals. Although some of them that I collected in another part of, of the beach were uh, probably a bit more amber. And I'll, I'll tie a few amber ones with amber bodies as well. So, um, as I say, most of them had sort of a, a grey coloured um, feelers. Um, well, a couple of them had amber coloured and a couple had more of an amber coloured body with amber coloured feelers. So, I'm about 70 30, um, 70 sand and 30 of the the ice ice blue pearl so I'm just gonna get a bit of dubbing in here and then with some true the eyes with a figure of eight and now I'm gonna start if you like just building up my dubbing as I go. So it's up to you I suppose to some extent how bulky you want it and for what reasons you know how close do you want it to look to the natural um obviously things like sink rate can be affected by the bulk in a fly as well so maybe depend whether you're fishing your shrimp in a current or whether you're fishing your shrimp in shallow water and so on so i suppose i have the advantage of actually looking at the naturals recently enough um it took a couple of minutes to collect them um along the shoreline um it took longer to drive to the to the spot it's about particularly spot where they're very very abundant at the moment is about oh, i'd say 20 minute drive whatever many kilometers that would be from from where i live um but there's a lot of them and the fish are eating them. I'm just going to add a hitch just to make sure nothing moves. So it's worth driving over to collect them. Um, so I'm just going to pull the back over the top and I'm going to just going to keep a bit of pressure on it and just trap it in. A couple of turns and I'm going to give it a turn underneath and again just to make sure nothing slips or slides away. Let's put a whip. Now there's a couple of options here. You can just trim this off, or you can split it and pull it down the sides to look like the legs. The disadvantages of, of, of things like that sometimes are when you're actually fishing, getting tangled up in things that are protruding. So I think there's enough things protruding from the pattern um, in the head area. So I'm not. Go I'm just going to trim it down. Let's give it two turns here and. Get my rib. So I'm just giving it a turn just to, just to get it started and then just an open turns, just trying to make sure and you're keeping the back of the flight on the back. Let's come around in and trap this in. Just that whip finish to it. Sorry, I have itch. Okay. So that's fight pretty much getting there. And just put a bit too much pressure on there. Just gonna add just three turns of a whip finish. I want as this thread isn't that that thin I don't want to add too much bulk to the to the head of the fly. So I think three turns will do it on this. Okay, this, this has the thing for cutting the thread but I've never used it. I'm just gonna use my scissors. Okay. 
going to do next. Again, this is this is option. It's going to get a black marker. I'm just going to add a bit of a, a dotted effect to that. Um, I'll leave it white underneath. I'm just going to get a needle. I'm going to pick out some of that dubbing. On each side and just be careful don't get caught try not to get your wire rib and mess it up so just nice and carefully and you can spend as long as you like at this now obviously because we're recording this don't want to do too long at it so um that's the dubbing out and I'm just gonna give it a rub of my velcro brush. Okay, so at this stage now our dubbing hopefully looks like legs and look I'll probably come back to this later and do another little bit with it. So then you Obviously, the side what length you want your legs. So I'm going to come into the slight angle because I want them longer near the point of the hook. I'm just going to turn that over. And the last thing I'm going to do is now I, I might sometimes I'll put an extra like stripe down the back. Look, okay, we we'll just do it just just for the sake of this, just to to model it up a bit more, depending on what shell back you're using and so on. Let's leave that dry just for a tick and then I'm just going to add some UV resin to the back. It's getting low so I have to give it a little shake. Just brush on some UV resin. Get our torch and give it a shot. Okay, now hopefully you might be able to see the UV sort of coming through in that thread as well. I'd say 100% it makes a difference but maybe it's a confidence thing or whatever just something I like and there you have it um, real life these are not actually the same length one 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 is slightly longer on the insect than the other but um, for fishing purposes I don't think it'll make uh, a huge difference so so there you have our our sandhopper imitation <laughs>